When I find out the fink who ratted on me, I am going to staple his lips together. <laughs> if you'll excuse me now, my support hoes are killing me. <laughs> Rat, fink, stooly. Boy, you're going to have to stop meddling in your mother's affairs. <laughs> me? Me? You help your mother call Hadley. Meddling is the glue that keeps the American family together. Excuse me, I said interfering was the glue. Meddling's always a bad mistake. Oh, thank you. Thank you for clearing that up. All right, Angela, I know it was me. I'll have to bite the bullet and go tell Mona the truth. No, it's all right. She's my mother. Uh, I made the call. I will do it. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back to A.O. Boy. That was the Boss Podcast. I'm Tori. I'm Kevin. And we are here to rewatch and discuss every single episode of Who's the Boss? Before we get started today, I want to say that I got a message. So today, Hunk of the Month went up. Um, mm. And that was the one where Tony did the calendar. Yes, how could I forget? And in the episode, we were like, how did Cassandra get a hold of Angela like, and find her? And we were like, oh, she must have found out who did the... Um, calendar and then called around. Well, we forgot what a phone book was. And my friend Jenny messaged me and she was like, she probably looked up Angela Bauer in the phone book because it said that he worked for her in the little ditty and that's how she found their number. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, phone book. Yeah, phone book. Totally forgot about what a phone book is. (laughs) Thank Mm. you, Jenny. (laughs) That made me laugh when I got that (laughs) message this morning. I was like, oh yeah. How about that? A phone book. All right. So today we're going to do season two, episode 11. This episode is called The Graduate. It first aired December 10th, 1985. And the TV Guide summary says, to prove a company is practicing age discrimination, Mona applies for a job, which she gets because Angela pulled a few strings. Spoiler alert. I know. It's everything really, away. It does, really. And why um, watch? This one was written by Bud Weiser, <laughs> one of I our like favorite that. names like here. That. Yeah. So when the episode opens, it's Mona's graduation party. So we haven't really heard much about Mona going to school in a while, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, they, yeah, I guess it, we're supposed to. Yeah, I mean, I guess we know she was still, still going. Yeah. yeah. But they were pretty heavy on it when the show first started and then. Kind of lost interest in that storyline. Uh, well, then maybe that's why she's graduating now. They got tired of it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Let's just get Mona out of school. Yeah, enough. And so Tony has decided that he's going to videotape the party. And he has the largest video <laughs> recorder. And it's so Which big. is probably what it was at the time. Yeah. I mean, I remember the okay, so camera connected to the box. See, I don't remember that. So I must, we must not. Have, did you have one of those? No, but I, no. But okay. it's it's fitting for the time because um, when I got a video camera, it wasn't until like 1991, maybe when I was in high school. Yeah. And I remember in the mid 80s, um, I remember that they were connected to the recorder. Okay, so what? So Samantha it was like is in the holding... early nineties when it became one piece. So, so what Samantha is holding is where the actual the actual tape... videotape goes. Oh, okay. And then the, he has a cable that goes to the camera, and everything else is in the camera. Right, that's funny. And then she has to hit record on the on the actual on the actual uh, recorder. Recorder, right? Yeah. I remember there wasn't even a button on the camera. <laughs> that's crazy. No. Um, yeah, so he is recording the party. She has a little clap clapboard. Is that what that's called? And yeah, everything. the directors, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, but <laughs> so, so silly. he's getting ready, and she, um, I, he says something about, oh, okay, they must be, they must have just purchased this. So she's uh-huh. reading the instructions, and she's like, Dad, they're all in Japanese. And then Tony makes the worst. Joke. Yeah, and then, then the most racist thing happens ever on Who's the Boss so far. Yeah, I, I mean, mean it was the eighties. I know. I know. Like that. I mean, honestly, no one would have even thought twice about that joke then. But and now no, I we're probably like, would have laughed, not knowing any better at yeah. the age, whatever. So you know better, and then you do better. Whatever. You can't really hold this show accountable for um, 
you know, today's standards, yeah. but it is an insensitive joke. And yeah, he said, <laughs> so we he, gonna yeah. say what it is or we just, well, he just kind of like karate chops. The well, camera. she says the, ja- the, the directions are in Japanese and then he says, Oh, okay, let me see him. And then he looks at him and then he karate chops the camera and it starts working right. for some reason. Yeah. So terrible. <laughs> but, okay. But more importantly, okay, let's move on to food because if you look in front of them, I know, what's going on on that table? I don't know, but I'm going to look for this. I'm going to find it. So there's like that secretary table or whatever that is that they have at the, I don't know, that's probably offensive, right? I don't know. It's a writing table at the end of the stairs. And on it is like the sandwich platter thing where it looks like there are small slices of bread that are like held in little... Yeah. Yeah. Like filing folder oh, something yeah. looking thing. And then like the sandwich stuff is below. So you grab your little pieces of bread and, and then, then you make a sandwich. I just want that for like a Saturday, not even a party. Yeah. I mean, I know we don't have parties right now. No, but. no. Maybe in 2022 you can have a party with yeah. your fancy bread <laughs> tray. So the door opens and Tony thinks it's going to be Mona and it's Angela and he's all and she's like but it's freezing out here and he's like let me get my moment so he shoves her back out into the Mm. cold and they open up the door again to reveal Mona standing there in her cap and gown so she comes in she does a little no more teachers no more books spiel teachers dirty looks yeah and then pulls off her cap and gown to reveal her dress and her party outfit so, um, she, oh, Tony wants her to make a little speech. So she goes over to the stairs and she's like, today is the best day since, well, Tuesday wasn't bad either. I know. I know. <laughs> but what'd Mona do on Tuesday? I know. Who'd, who'd Mona do on Tuesday? More accurately, yes. And Tony's like, this is a fam, I'm taping a family show here. Oh, there was another shot of the sandwich rack. Sorry. Yeah, I got great. distracted by food. Um, yeah, so he's like, I'm trying to tape a family show here. And she's like, well, then you better get me from the neck up. I know. I could like that dress is so revealing, but whatever. Yeah, right. And I yeah. like the little belt she has on, some kind of like jewel. Yeah, it's, it's pretty I don't fancy. Know if it's a belt. It's probably part of the dress, but. I don't know. It might be a belt. But yes, yeah. it does we'll kind of match know. the colors in the dress. Now, I lo- this is a very 80s thing that I love that they do. And they even kind of still do it today in sitcoms where. There are all these people in the background who I guess are Mona's friends, Mm -hmm. but we've never seen them before and we will never see them again. Well, a lot of them are young college students. Yeah, true. I think. But But the uh, the other interesting thing is, and I wonder if this was like something like when they went out to go get party favors. I don't know. It's all USC colors. Like oh. the colors of the oh, college. You think that's like, like it's with... like they found USC stuff when they shot it. Yeah, because I guess where she's supposed to be going, it's called Ridgemont, mm-hmm. I believe. Um, but have they oh, ever really? even said that? Uh, I well, don't know. that is, I think that's the name. I could be wrong. Um, I'm sure someone will let me know. But the college that Samantha and Tony end up going to, I believe, is called Ridgemont, and it's hmm. the one that's like near their house. So I'm guessing that that's also where she went. And I don't know if we've seen her wearing a college shirt at this point. Um, But we will see Tony and Samantha wear them. Hmm. But I don't remember if those are the colors. But they probably are. So, (laughs) yeah, I wonder if they're just like, oh, well, we have access to these colors. So we'll make it. I know. It's all USC (laughs) colors. But whatever. But maybe just a coincidence. So Mona gives a speech, and in the speech, she wants to thank someone who has always supported her. I know. It's, this is another sad <laughs> moment know. for Angela. <laughs> and Angela's waiting for her to t- say it's her. But she says... And she's like, oh, mother. Yeah, right. Oh, stop. And she does. She's like, it's Dr. Jack Emerson. Yeah. This uh, character is played by an actor named John Hancock. Um, and I looked him up. Again, lots of stuff throughout the 80s and very yeah. early 90s. Um, he was on Taxi. Um, oh, is that right? Yes, okay. he was. Yeah. But he died of a heart attack in 1992. Oh, God. Yes. He wasn't very um, old. He was in his 50s, I believe. But also, you can tell he's extremely tall. It noted on his IMDb that he is 6'5". Wow. Yeah, it was a very tall I was wondering. He, he looks really tall. So I like that we have a bit of diversity but, here. Well, he's he's 
most notable, I mean, I don't know if he's most notable, but what I remember is from that controversial Family Ties yeah. episode where the um, racist people come and destroy the house. Right, because they, the they wanted to like move so out insane, of... But they wanted they to move, move out of their white yeah. neighborhood and then the... Um, yeah, I looked and um, he's in seven episodes of Family Ties. Okay, so he must have been their neighbor for a while. Yeah. I, just, I think I, wa- I like saw that episode recently. Yeah, so, I think we watched that together. Yeah, like a couple I think years so. Ago. Because again, I remember thinking, "Oh, these are friends that they've never had before." Right, but and now, now they're, suddenly they're best friends with. Them, well, I feel like, like they just moved thing. in though. Oh, okay. So maybe that Family was the Ties. first episode. Yeah, so the the maybe that's when they became friends. Anyway, this is the Who's the Boss podcast, not a Family Ties. <laughs> that's next, maybe yeah, after right. after Alien Nation. Oh my God! No. So <laughs> I'd have to watch every show. I'm just kidding. So. Um, oh no, Alienation is only one season, but yeah, anyway. Um, but I like how there's a bit of diversity going on here at this party. There are a few people of color in the background. Um, again, like, you know, a lot of work to do in the eighties as far as the fact that they are just in the background, at least this is the first time that, um, we've had a person of color really having a speaking role. (laughs) (laughs) Unreal. Is that right? I believe so. Like before there've been, um, a few, People, but they haven't really spoken. They've just kind of been background filler. Okay, that makes sense. So um, I like that. And then there's another connection to that later in the episode that I'll mention that I thought was nice. So um, Tony asks Angela if she would like to say anything. And at first she's playing coy. Oh, yeah, no, I funny. couldn't. And then she pulls out a piece of paper and starts going into a whole speech. Yeah, that's pretty funny. But as she's giving her speech, this pretty girl... Come, come walks in front mm-hmm. and like walks by and that's it and Tony pin loses pig it. tony comes out <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> tony completely loses interest in what angela's saying <laughs> and he just starts following this girl through the party i know um this lady i looked her up what is her name her hair at the time here could could uh, go yeah, now could i know now. she's great hair i know I like that's that a too. good look her name is Lisa Savage, okay. and she plays Carla. All right. She's she hasn't acted since the '80s, so um, a few things here and there. Nothing that she, you would Lisa Savage. Her from. Oh, I think her picture. Her picture on the Internet Movie Database is actually is, from this episode. And anytime and, we ever look right. somebody up, or we watch this through Amazon prime right now because that the first two episodes first two seasons are on prime they when you pause it they put the pictures at the bottom it's right well it's through it's the internet movie database is doing the cast it's doing yeah. the cast yeah. so you see the pictures and anytime it's some it, the person is in the actual episode we're watching we know they haven't done anything else right <laughs> yeah it's that picture and to add insult to injury it's for literally Lisa the Savage, black and white right picture. it is not only a picture of her from this episode oh, no. <laughs> it is a picture of her through the viewfinder <laughs> of Tony, Tony's camera <laughs> even though there were other shots of her in color <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Oh, poor girl. So, yeah, so he starts following her and um, going through the party. Like a weirdo. Now, Dr. Emerson asks Mona, since she has her psychology degree now, you know, what are her plans? And she's like, oh, any other student, I want to go bum around Europe and find myself. And if you look in the background while she's having this conversation, Tony's still following the girl and Angela's arguing with him. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> and like getting <laughs> super annoyed. It's this whole little dance they're doing in the background. I know. It's actually great. Yeah. You watch the whole thing. But so Dr. Emerson is like, well, I have, you know, a thought for you. And there's a place that I would like you to apply for a job. And he explains that... She's probably not going to get the job. It's with Hadley Shoe Company. Mm -hmm. And she's basically saying, you know, I don't really know if I want a job actually just yet. And he's like, well, don't worry because you're not going to get it. The point is, is that we know that because you were over and he's like over four. Right. He doesn't want to say over 22 that you most likely won't get the job because we have some sort of intel that this company is. Um, discriminating against people based on their age. So she agrees that she'll help him out. Right. And he tells her, you know, okay, you're going to have to dress down a bit. Like, don't go in there looking like you do because you give off a younger vibe than what we're looking for. And she agrees. And then he says, you know, and you also have to keep this completely secret. No one can know about it. Right. And she says she will. She says, 
Just call me Mona Hari. Yep. Which I I knew you were gonna look this up, so I didn't so that's even. That's why bother. you didn't. Exactly. Why? How did you know that? Because I just knew, and because when we watched this episode, because we have you started watching start it again. Typing? Yeah, he starts feverishly oh, scratching no. something on a piece of paper, and so then I know he's gonna go look. What it did up. you look it up? I did not know. Okay, so you're gonna. Lie. It's good. Okay, let me hear. Okay, I think it comes from the Mata Hari, which is uh, Margaretha Gertrude. McLeod, uh, August 1876 through October 1917, very old, Mm -hmm. better known by the stage name Matahari, was a Dutch exotic dancer and is that courtesan? Yeah, courtesan. (laughs) Courtesan? Yeah. Who was convicted of being a spy for Germany during World War I. Oh. So that makes sense, right? Okay, well then she doesn't want to say call me Matahari because this lady got caught. Right, but she was a spy who right. didn't. Got it. Before she got caught, <laughs> she didn't. She was a spy. Right, right. I got it. Okay. What, um, <laughs> anyway. Oh, interesting. Okay, I did not know that. That's all. That's all I got on that. My no, heart, it but it took me thank a minute you. to figure it out. Yeah, thank you. All right. I mean, maybe like thirty seconds, but whatever. <laughs> all right. So. Uh, Tony's still following the pretty girl around in the background and Sam's like, my feet are getting tired and we ran out of tape about five minutes ago (laughs) and Tony's like, shh. I know. He's like, I know. And it's like, how creepy is Tony making his daughter go through all this? I know. I carry the thing around so I can follow this hot chick around the party with a camera. (laughs) She's sweating. She's she's like fanning herself with a clapboard because she's she's hot and tired. (laughs) I know. Oh, Dad. Okay, so later in the day, so this party must have been an early party um, because it seems to be the same day. They're in the kitchen. Tony's telling Angela that she threw a great party. Meanwhile, he's digging food out of one side of the sink. I know. And she's like, I'm really sorry about the sink. And he's like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, but there's one thing you should know about the garbage disposal. It's on the other side. I know, but how would she not know that? I know. She's not a (laughs) stupid person. And then, like, was she just chucking plates full of food down the garbage? Like, you scrape it into the garbage, and then just some stuff goes in the garbage disposal. Really knows nothing about that kitchen. But also in this scene, if you look, um, when they first come to Tony, you can see that front part of the counter, and there's some massive shadow of a boom mic yeah, going just back sweeping and forth across over, the room which is great but then i got distracted by the enormous wheel of brie cheese i know that and mona you probably came in. wanted to start gnawing on that yeah because she was like no one ate your brie How cheese did nobody eat the brie oh, come on i would have been I mean, all I know over you. that yeah, yeah it looks so good um i want some brie so anyway <laughs> so angela and tony make a note that they noticed that she and dr emerson were kind of huddled together they were thick as thieves. Thick as thieves. And the the reason why I wanted to bring this up here and why I like it is because it's they're assuming that she she's interested. Yeah, right. that they were interested in each other. And they don't bring anything up about race. It has nothing to do with race. I know. That's actually nice. It's completely like left out. For 1985. Out. Yeah. And they're just saying like, oh, you, you know, you guys are really cozy. What's going on? It's It's redeeming. From the karate chop on the camera (laughs) earlier. exactly. I think. Um, So, yeah, it wasn't a plot point. It wasn't anything. It was just we kind of thought you guys looked cozy together. Um, So she's like, well, I guess it doesn't hurt to tell you that he has a lead for her on a job. And she's going to be applying at a shoe factory to be the personnel counselor. Hadley Shoe Company. So... You know, like it doesn't sound like a glamorous job or anything, but she seems to be excited about it. And Angela's like, "Oh, I recognize that company name because we did a campaign for them." And Tony's like, "Oh, don't worry, they won't hold that against you." <laughs> and um, you know, Mona's like, "Oh, don't worry, I'm not worried about getting this job at all." So she seems pretty confident that, or Angela thinks that she seems pretty confident she's going to get this job. But Angela's not so sure. She's like, you know, they're gonna, there's going to be a lot of competition. A lot of other kids are graduating. They're much younger than her, and this is an entry-level job. And she's like, if I know anything about Sid Hadley, she's not going to get it. So even Angela knows Hadley's repu- reputation for, I guess, ageism. I just, I looked something up real quick. Oh, what was it? Well, Tony mentions, he's like, boy, that moan, she's a card. 
Oh, so yeah. If you call someone a card, it means they're funny or quick-witted. So, okay, where have I heard... Have we heard that in another episode? Well, probably, because... but I just realized it now, and I, I quickly entered it into the Google, <laughs> and that's the answer I got. Yeah, I feel like we've either recently heard that on a different show... Maybe it was this show. Or we've heard it on this show. He's probably yeah. said it before. Probably it's probably has. an improvised line. Yeah. It's right there with wait a moment or whatever. <laughs> he didn't sing in this episode. I know. I I'm a little think. disappointed. I'm waiting. So Angela tells Tony, like, I really worry that she's not going to get this job. And Tony's like, well, you said that you knew Hadley. So how well do you know Hadley? And Angela's like, says, nope, I'm not calling. I'm not getting involved in this. Cut to. Right. <laughs> but... Tony pressures her. He's like, you know, you got a medal. It's family. You need to do what you can do to help out your mom. And so Mona, oh, I'm sorry. Before this conversation, Mona asked for the keys to the JAG because right. she had a date. Right. Sorry, um, I probably interrupted you with the card. <laughs> it's fine. Definition. So, um, but after the last episode, or was it two episodes ago, where she um, messed up the tires on the JAG? Right, all of a sudden she can drive again. Right. After she's Angela the car. paid to fix the tires on the car. And she says, don't worry, my date's had his license for at least six years. <laughs> God. So Do her the date math. must be 21, <laughs> right? If well, I guess the legal age is 16, right? Yeah, which I think it is because I think that's when Samantha gets her license. Uh, six years, later. 22. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank no, I'm you. just saying. Oh, wow. <laughs> whatever. Isn't it 16? No, you're right. You're okay. right. I was doing. Uh, not, I'm not trying to call you. Six. Out. No, thank you very much. No, it makes I it so have... much better that a 50 something year old woman's going up after a 22 year old rather than a 21 year old. <laughs> hey, much you know, better. no judgment. Let I, them have some fun. Um, so, or let her. Well, yeah. Let She's, her have some fun. Yeah. He's having fun too. It's Mona. No, I know, I know. I'm just saying. And but Tony makes some comment of like um, Angela's like I'm really worried about her and Tony's like ah yeah, she'll be fine as long as she doesn't take him across state lines which I guess he's trying to make some joke about him being underage but no, I think that's what that means yeah even though he's not anyway moving on so um, so Angela does end up calling Sid and as soon as we meet Sid. You can see that everything we've heard about him thus far is true. He just yeah. kind of seems like a slime ball. He's checking out his hair in one of his many photographs of shoes on the wall. I know. He likes shoes. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, he makes some joke on the phone about there's no business like shoe business, which that is going to come back in another episode. Oh, is that right? Yes. Sid comes back too? No, I don't think Sid comes oh. back. But yeah. that is the title of another episode, and I think it's somebody else that Mona knows from um, the shoe company. Okay. This actor is Rob Lieberman, and I would say he is best known as playing Bill Walker in RoboCop, which I have not seen. No, I don't remember RoboCop. Yeah. I mean, I Believe feel Believe like, it or not, I never watched any of the Robo- RoboCop movies. Really? I think I may have mm-hmm. watched them, but I don't remember. So... He gets on the phone with Angela. He calls her Angel. He's just kind of... Bleh. Yeah, cheese ball. <laughs> yeah. And Angela mentions that um, Mona's going to be coming in for an interview. And he's like, oh, she's actually right outside right now. And he's like, her resume looks really good. So Angela never lets on how old Mona is or that she's her mother. But she just wants him to give her a very fair shot at this job. And Sid, in exchange, asks for Angela to find a position for her his brother-in-law yeah, at apparently Wallace and McQuaid. Loser. Yeah, so she only has the mail room, but Sid takes it. So they make this deal. Once the deal is done, uh, Sid calls Mona into his office through a secretary, and um, Angela is quite proud of herself for being able to have the clout to be able to pull this off. And his secretary is trying to like warn him on the phone. And he's like, no, no, just send her in. Well, Mona comes in dressed like... <laughs> it's so strange. <laughs> she looks like Granny from uh, Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> she does. That's a good description. <laughs> that was the only thing I could really... I, I knew it was something. And so when I looked it up, that was what I feel like she looks like the most. That's good. So she's hacking. She's acting like her whole body hurts. <laughs> I know. And... 
she actually falls asleep I during know. the interview. So my thought here is, okay, so one, I like that they're doing this storyline because I feel like this is probably still, and Mona in her position, we find out later in this episode, she's never had a job. She's just finished college. I'd say she's about 57, 56, 57 at this point. You think that old? Yeah, probably. Well, Catherine 50s. Hellman was 56 when the show started. And mm. I don't know that they've ever say, said how old Mona is, so I just kind of assume that she's the same. But for a woman to go into the workforce at that age probably was quite daunting. And was she was going to absolutely face mm. ageism. And she would, I feel even today, you know... There's always that fear of even like taking off too much time at work because trying to go back after a long um, hiatus is difficult when you have so many people who are younger and willing to work for less money. So this is a great storyline that they're bringing up here. And but I feel like Mona's laying it on a little thick because yeah. It would it's a be bit much. Right. It would be hard for them then to go back to Hadley and fight this if she's actually fallen asleep in the job interview. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like what I said to you earlier. How can they sue if, you know, she's not the right one for the job? Right. But, I mean, her resume looks great. Her transcripts look great. Yeah, I guess so. So, but I guess the fear is if she would have gone in looking like Mona, but just a little less Mona that she would have gotten the job. I'm not really sure. Plus it's the comedic part here. I mean, it's just very funny to see Catherine Hellman dress like this and acting like this. And what is on her hat? It looks like I eyeballs. Know. I don't know. <laughs> They're like buttons or something. <clears throat> I know. What is that hat? So she's expecting to not get this job, but she does. Oh, my mouse locked up here. Well, we're going to have to end this because I can't scroll. Oh, there we go. Okay, hang on. No, no. We're going to have to end this. <laughs> this is what That's happens it. when you don't have paper, right? Yeah, I could probably read some more stuff off the internet. <laughs> All right, so she doesn't think she's going to get the job, but she does. Now, waiting at oh, home. she's mad. Yeah, Tony's at home with the video camera again. Now the clapboard says the start of Mona's career, and they're waiting for her to come to the front door. She just got out of the car. So Tony goes out the front door and he's shooting towards the car with the camera. And he's like, oh, it's not Mona. Oh, it is Mona. Is Mona's mother still alive? (laughs) I know, because it's it's this old person (laughs) coming. So in walks Mona looking like Granny again. And she's angry. So they're like, what happened? And Angela's like, Mother, what are you wearing? (laughs) What happened? And she says, like, she wasn't supposed to get the job. It was a sting, an undercover caper right. to fight age discrimination. I like that. She's all about the cause now. Right. Yeah. And she says, I tried everything but the death rattle. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> do you know what a death rattle is? Oh, did you look it up? Do, I, I, do I, know I know what a death rattle is? I know what it is. And I think I know what it is from when we used to watch Six Feet Under. Okay. Yeah. Because it's disgusting. It is do disgusting. you really want me to read it? Sure. Okay, now to bring down this show a little bit. The so-called death rattle refers to a gurgling sound that individuals often make during the dying process. When people are no longer able to swallow or cough, saliva builds up in the back of the throat and the airwaves causing a rattling sound when air passes through. Yes, it's really There's gross. your death rattle. I've heard that this happens a lot, like um, that's disturbing. When someone's like in the cor- in a coroner's truck, oh, because it's like the still it's air, like the air the, yeah. That's probably from six feet under. Yes, and I think that's why I knew I learned about it on TV, and I think it was six feet. I under. think you're right. I think there is a scene when Nate starts with the company. I yeah, know, because they like. Knows anything. They, I There's guess it can be really David scary ex- if you don't know what it, it is yeah. because this person is not oh, supposed God, to be making so noise anymore. Okay, anyway. anyway there so. you go. I, I looked up death rattle. <laughs> and you don't think I contribute to this podcast. <laughs> I've never said that. Ever. I know. I know. I make kidding. fun of you, but I've never said that. 
So okay. the 20 listeners. <laughs> so um, Mona's angry that someone snitched. And Angela's like, well, why didn't you tell me what was going on? And Mona's like, why? And she's like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> because I just find this very interesting. We've never had a spy in the family before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Except for Uncle Ernie. But he was more of a peeping Tom. I, I, it's like, <laughs> it gets so creepy. I like, who, who is that? With Wait, the peeping? who's Uncle Ern? Is it is it Mona's brother? Is was it Angela's father? And how brother? did we know? I guess he got caught. He must have gotten caught. Oh, and God. I'm going to say more than once. <laughs> Maybe that's why we don't ever see him on the episode because <laughs> yeah. he's the peeping yeah, Tom. Yeah, as far I don't think we ever meet an Uncle Ernie. No. Um, and Mona kind of points to the children because they're sitting there. They probably don't want Jonathan to know that great uncle Ernie was a peeping Tom. And John Jonathan's like, what's a peeping Tom? And Samantha says, I'll tell you when you're older. And he's like, you always say that. And she's like, because I'm always older. That's a good point. So they leave. I guess that's just to get the kids out of the room. Well, oh, yeah, the kids leave, right? Yeah. Okay. And so Mona's like, when I find the fink who blabbed, she, I'm going to staple their lips together. I know, and it's so violent. Like, it's so mob mentality. I'm going to staple their lips together. But so it's violent. so Mona. It's great. So she's like, well, now I got to go because my support hose is killing me. So she leaves... And she's yelling, rat, fink, stoolies, as she's going out the kitchen door. Right. Uh, Would you like to learn about... Oh, of course. Yes. (laughs) Of course. Well, the rat fink is uh, an informer or a spy or a traitor. Oh, okay. That makes sense. And a stoolie is someone acting as an informer informer or decoy for the police. So it's somebody impersonating. Yeah, like I it guess. sounds like something you would hear in Dick Tracy. You know, rat thinks stoolie. Yeah. I I get so scared when I hear these things. I'm thinking, oh god, this is gonna be some racist. Oh and yeah, like yeah. some you know what I mean, or some kind of slang. Right. Or, but it's not. Thank God. <laughs> Every it time does I go look back them. to the mob a lot, though. We've, it does. Yeah, yeah, rat thinks stoolie. <laughs> <laughs> So Mona leaves and Tony's like, man, you really need to stop meddling in your mother's affairs. <laughs> I know. Like, he wasn't the one right. egging her on. Angela's like, me, you're the one that says that meddling is the glue that holds families together. And he's like, no, no, no. Interf- interfering is good. Meddling is bad. <laughs> What's the difference? Right. So Tony says, okay, well, I'll go talk to her. And Angela's like, no, she's my mother, and I made the phone call, so I'll do it. He's like, okay, and he runs away. I know, that's funny. So Angela goes up to Mona's apartment, and now, not even seven minutes later, Mona's in a fantastic mood. And she's Angela says, you know, your mood swings are kind of starting to concern me. And... Mona's like, she's no longer upset because she just spoke to Dr. Emerson and they think that she must have just gotten the job on her own. And that even though she went in there looking like Granny, her true colors came shining through and they saw her real personality. And so that's why she got the job. Hmm. And Angela's like, well, great. Sounds good. (laughs) And Tony comes to the door and he's still feeling guilty. And he's like, I can't let you take the fall for this. I'm going to have to speak up. <laughs> and Angela's like, no, 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 we're good. Right. We're good She's here. She's like, everything's like, good. We're fine. Let's go. Sounds good. We're good. No. And he says, no, it was my fault that she called Hadley. She, uh, and the rack, rack the thing rack. stoolies. <laughs> so now Mona's angry and she realizes that she didn't get the job on her own, but that Angela called Sid Hadley and made a deal and that she even gave his brother-in-law a job. So she says, you traded in one bozo brother-in-law for one useless mother. Mm. That's sad. So Mona's upset that Angela didn't think that she could get the job on her own. And Tony's like, you know, if you can't help your mom out, what's the point of being a big shot? But Mona tells the story about how, you know, she's never had a job. Like she was raised to look pretty and throw parties and use the right fork And she did start college, but, you know, probably when she went to college, it was sort of the thing where women went to college to look for their husband. Mm. And then once she found her husband, she stopped going to school. And then she never had a job. I mean, her job was raising Angela, but she never had a job outside of the home. 
And Tony's pretty surprised that Mona's never had a job outside of the home. Oh, my mouse again. I think oh, my no. battery's dying. I got it. It's okay. I'm going to use my other hand. Um, so Mona says the closest she ever came to having a job was the kissing booth at the Methodist Bazaar. <laughs> why? Why? I don't know. But Angela's like, you did a lot more than just kiss Methodist. You went to college and you prepared for this. So, like, you may not have gotten this job the way you wanted to, but now you have this job and you can prove that you can do it. Uh, The next day, or Monday, I guess she's supposed to report for work on Monday. I don't know what day it is. Um, She goes in there and shows up at Hadley's office now looking like Mona normally looks. Right, and he's just in his office shining his shoes because he's so into shoes. He's very into shoes. With a shoe shiner. That's fancy. I mean, you can't be the head of a shoe company and have your shoes look messy. That's a good point. Like, they'd have to probably always be very nice. True. (laughs) So, at first, he doesn't think that she's really Mona. (laughs) He's like, no. and um, But then he figures it out. So... I don't know if she, like, has been there a couple hours already or what, but she comes in with a bunch of ways that she's going to improve conditions for the employees. Yeah, she's got it all figured out. Yeah, but she noticed that there were three pregnant women down in the warehouse and that he's going to need to open up a daycare. That's never going to happen. No. (laughs) I don't think... I've worked for one company that's ever had a daycare. Like, I don't, I mean, it was me, unless that was more popular in the 80s, which I doubt. Yeah, For no companies way. to have no. like an in house daycare. Yeah. And then she's, she said, you know, you make great running shoes, so you should be giving some of them away as freebies. That I could see. Because well, that's she after says, he makes a comment about one of them not being. Oh, right. He said one of them is not. Three pregnancies, is one's not pregnant. She's just. She just eats, eats a, lot. a lot. Yeah. Nice. And she said, you know, how about a fitness center? And then you can keep the employees active and happy. Okay, I could see that happening Mm -hmm. before the daycare. But that's even a little unrealistic for this time period. This guy's going to spend thousands of dollars (laughs) making a daycare and a a gym because Mona came in and told him so. Yep. But he loves the ideas. So um, she then explains, well, I'll come work here, but the deal is off. You know, my daughter is not going to hire your brother-in-law because I'm going to, you know, prove to you that I can do this job on my own. Mm. And if you don't want me, then I'll take my ideas to Tom McCann. I used to have Tom McCann shoes, I'm pretty sure. Did they make the penny loafers? Yes. Okay. I believe they did, yes. I used to wear the penny loafers. With with real pennies. With the penny, yeah. yeah. Um, So, yes, he agrees and he hires her. He doesn't want to hear about Tom McCann. No, he doesn't want her going to the competition. He needs her. So the tag of this episode, Angela and Tony are waiting. They can't go. Angela can't leave for work yet. It's 930. Yeah. And she's still at home. So she can't leave until she knows what happens. So the phone rings and they both run for it. But Angela gets it and answers so tony runs into the kitchen and gets on the kitchen phone and they're both talking over each other and talking over mona so she can't even explain what happened so finally she's able to let them know that she got the job yeah and they're still arguing so she just hangs up and then tony and angela continue to argue until angela hangs up on tony and that's the end of the episode (laughs) yeah and we discussed that we i felt like they had no ideas for a tag and that's what they came up with yeah yeah, like sometimes the tags really button stuff up, and other and times there's, they probably they're just like, like that. Yeah, <laughs> they just need something to end it. <laughs> in any, in any, if you ever have any doubt, they should have just had them kiss for no reason, and that'd be a better uh, tag. Would complicate things. <laughs> <laughs> and then fade to black. Okay, they're so, making out of fade to black. That's, that's fine with me. And scene. Okay, so. You go first on the rating this week, because I, I mean, this time, because I definitely went first last time. Um, you did? How do you know that? Because it was just two nights ago. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to go with a solid seven. Oh, okay. It was, I mean, it was fine. It wasn't groundbreaking, but it wasn't, it had its moments. Mm-hmm. Tony with the video camera was funny. Um, and then Angela thinking that Mona's going to, you know 
mention her in her speech and she doesn't. Right. It's kind of funny. You know, typical yeah. Mona Angela moments. Um, yeah, it was good. It was it was fine. Yeah, I, I went up just a little lower. I went 6.5. Oh, okay. Um, for, I mean, for the same reasons. Like, it was kind of a filler episode. Yeah. It was nice seeing Mona have a storyline. and I, That's true, too. Like, she, there hasn't been a lot with Mona lately. Yeah. I mean, there... There has been, but not a storyline that like centered around her. Right. Um, I didn't love it, but it was entertaining enough. What's funny is I am sure that when this show aired, I was probably like, I didn't like that episode because yeah, it had no Sam. Right. Yeah, yeah, very little Sam. I agree. I could see that. But now as a grown up watching this, we all started out as the 20 something person at work. And then, and I've thought this a few times over the last few years, like the next thing you know, you look up and everyone is like 10 to 12 years younger than you are. And you don't even realize it happens. I know. Like you're the one getting married and you're the one having a baby. And then the next thing you know, everyone else around you are the ones having babies and the ones getting married. Yeah. And you have a 10 year old and you're in the middle of your 40s. Yeah. Welcome to my hell. (laughs) So... I think now, because of that, I can appreciate this episode more than I did the first time around. Who's the boss around here? Me? Or my mother? Or maybe it's you! I went with Mona for the Mm. boss. Um, Because even though Angela pulled the strings and got the job, um, in the end, you know, she went in there and said, this is who I really am, and if you want me, you're going to need to get rid of the deal and, you know, I'm worth it for this company. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. Is that you? That you're done? Okay. I, have, I have. I just oh, trailed okay. off. Sorry. Yeah, you did. Um, you, that, that's that's my job to trail off. Um, I think uh, I'm, I agree with you. I think it was Mona. I think she was right. It was. Did, her, this did was, you just make that up? Right. Do you have anything written down? Um. Hang on. Um, yeah, there's something on this page. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, fine. There's something about Mona never having a job in her life. Right. <laughs> anyway, yes. No, I, I, I really do think that. I do think that she was the boss. Yeah. Um, she, this was her episode. It was, um, she was running things the whole episode. She was. She was in control. Yeah. She had, she, she went in for the interview. She was going in. For the sting operation. Um, but yeah, like the other two were just whatever. Meddling. Yeah, meddling. Doing nothing. Yeah. Kind of ruined. They were rat fink stoolies. <laughs> yeah. Ru- ruining things. <laughs> they messed everything up. And in the end, she still got the job and then made some, you know, got a daycare and a gym. Yeah. <laughs> right. Those, At, uh, <laughs> those three pregnant women or two pregnant women two, yeah, now have somewhere woman. to bring their baby after yeah. they have it. Okay, so you can reach us at Who's the Boss Podcast on Instagram or Who's the Boss Pod One on Twitter or the Who's the Boss Podcast page on Facebook. Or you can go to anchor.fm slash WTB podcast and there you can leave us a voice message. Hmm. Um, yeah, leave us, if you get on there, um, leave us an AO, OA, so I don't have to do it every week. Yeah. I'm or sing the song because we're out of songs. We are. We are. We've hit the end of the, the end of the road. We are actually out of songs. So before we go, I'll just say that next time we are going to cover Tony the Nanny. Mm. I always want to say which episode we're covering next, and half the time I forget. But you know, just trying to get by. Well, this time you remembered. I did. Um, but this is when Tony's cousin is sent over to America to meet her arranged husband. And then they, Angela and Mona and Samantha get a hold of her (laughs) and they turn her into an American woman. So that should be fun. But that's it. All right. We're just going to say goodbye. Yeah. We need nothing. Bye. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and tell all your friends and give you a big pat on the back. Bye. I added some extra.